All right, welcome back to, oops, sorry, I got the wrong meant to go here. Welcome back to Cooking with the Veteran. This is his first time watching my show. Welcome to Cooking with the Veteran. As always, I'm your host, Dave Rogers. Um, you know, this is Memorial Day weekend, and I want to remind people, you know, while I appreciate, and a lot of veterans appreciate, um, you know, you thanking them for their service, uh, this weekend is not about us. This weekend is about all of the men and women who are no longer with us, who have lost their lives, paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms of our country. So as you go about your weekend, you know, remember them. As always, to all my brothers and sisters out there deployed overseas, wherever you are, know that we love you, we miss you, we're thinking about you, and we hope you come home safe soon. Um, so this being, you know, Memorial Day weekend, I know a lot of people like to barbecue, um, and I like to put together these special episodes for all my brothers and sisters out there who maybe cannot barbecue. Uh, they don't have a backyard or they don't have a smoker or whatever. You know, they don't have those kinds of things. And you can create some great food in your kitchen. Okay, you don't have to uh, have that. Have a backyard or have a, a grill or have a smoker or whatever else like that. So today I picked up some, uh, the other day I picked up some bison ribs from my friends over at the Tennessee Meat Company. And if you've been following my show, you know that I soak them. Uh, I use some Jack Fire, some apple juice, and I picked up uh, the guys at the Tennessee Meat Company were telling me the Heath Riles uh, rubs are really good. You know, I like making my own rubs, but I like to try other rubs, see what's out there. So that's what I seasoned the ribs with, and they've been soaking for two days. Um, you know, bison is a little more of a gamier meat, um, so I'm going to brine it a little bit more than I would for regular ribs. So for two days, they've been sitting in my refrigerator soaking. I've been flipping them, you know, get up in the morning, flip it, and even before I go to bed, flip it, just kind of flipping them around so all the sides get a nice soak in of, of all the juices there. I've got some uh, brown sugar rubbed bacon. I got some green onions. I got some Granny Smith apples. And I'm going to show you how I'm going to set these up to smoke these in my oven right here at home. So I'm going to start. I got my pan. Okay, you can see my pan here. Oops, I'm going to bring it this way. See my pan here? I moved this the other day. The There we go. That's better. Um, I put some parchment paper down because I'm going to put wood chips in here. And the last thing I want is for any wood chips uh, to kind of bake into the bottom of my Dutch oven, right? So I got these. This is some Jack Daniels wood chips. Um, they're from the smoke barrels that they have. Uh, and they create these wood chips. Um, so I'm going to put these. Okay. You know, we're down in Tennessee, and I'm a big Jack Daniels drinker, you know that, so um, I won't say big, but, you know, I drink Jack Daniels. <laughs> um, so, all right, so I got some some nice wood chips down in here, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take another piece of parchment paper, and I'm going to cover it over those wood chips, and then I'm going to take my knife, and I'm just going to create some holes, okay? So that the smoke comes up um, through the wood chips, not just around the sides. All right, I'm gonna make some holes in my paper. All right, let's come back over here. So we got our ribs. Okay, I'm gonna take them out at this time. Let them drain a little bit. Like I said, they've been soaking for two days and applesauce and jack fire they look great all right it's got a nice uh nice smell of the uh jack daniels and and the applesauce and the rub the rub smells really great and i'm going to put my my bacon okay 
right along the inside here. I'm going to put some strips. I'm going to take my green onions. I'm going to put those along the inside here. And this is how I would do it if I was doing it on a smoker also. All right. I would just put these along here and let it sit inside my smoker. I'm going to do a little bit more with that because I'm going to have to fold this to go inside of the pan. So to leave room so that the smoke goes through, I'm going to put a couple of granny apple, half granny apples. Okay. Right. And what's that's what that's going to do as I fold this, you'll see that's going to create a tunnel in there. Okay, a nice beautiful tunnel. And then I'm going to come back over here. I'm going to stick this in my pan there. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to put a few pieces of apple around it here. Let me get some apple here. So it's just going to smoke um, all that flavor. Okay, all that apple flavor. And believe it or not, you know, apple goes really well with bison. You know, in the uh, in the old days, they used a lot of fruit uh, with their game meat to give it a lighter taste. So, like I said, I'm just going to stick some apples around the side here. I have my oven uh, preset already, okay, uh, to 375 degrees. I'm going to cover this. I'm going to stick this in my oven, and I'm going to let this cook. So I'm going to cook it for uh, about 30 minutes. I'm going to check on it make sure it's not drying out too much. I'm going to take some of my applesauce. I'm going to... Uh, watered down some of the applesauce. I'm going to create a spray so that I keep it moist. Okay, so every like 30 minutes I'm going to check on it. I'm going to spray it some. After about an hour and a half, I'm going to flip it over. Okay, see where the meat is at. Spray it down some more um, and keep it in the oven until you want the meat to be about 165 degrees in the center. All right, so it's got some nice meaty parts. I can take my thermometer, I can stick it in there and see where it's at. And once the meat uh, is at 165, uh, then I know that my ribs are done. Very simple. You know, it takes a little while to cook. Even if you're cooking on your smoker, it takes you a while to cook. You know, you're going to cook it four to eight hours, just depending on um, your smoker. Um, you know, you might leave it in longer. Uh, like I said, you don't want to over smoke it. Okay. And, and that's one of the things I love about, it's going to get smoked in the oven here, but it's not going to be over smoked because I only got a little bit of wood chips in there, but the cover, when I cover it, the Smithy cover, okay, that's going to seal in all that smoke and that's going to allow it to circulate the air and smoke the meat right in the oven. So you can smoke meat in your oven. Um, you know, some of my friends up at the Tennessee Meat Company have tried this at home, and they love that it's not too smoked, but you get that nice smoky flavor, and the meat is nice and tender. All right. So again, to all my brothers and sisters out there, deployed overseas, wherever you are, know that we love you, we miss you, we're thinking about you. To those that are no longer with us, we're going to be going out this weekend placing flags on their graves and let them know that they are not forgotten. They are still here with us right here in our hearts and in our minds. Um, I think about PFC Brown from my old unit. Um, unfortunately, I wasn't able to deploy to Iraq with them because I broke my neck. And unfortunately, he passed away. He died, killed in action. Um, and it was very hard for me. I dealt with that for a long time, many, many years. Uh, kind of survivor's guilt of being here and not having him here with us. So I think about him. I think about his family. Um, but, you know, go out, um, be with your families, be with your loved ones. And remember what this weekend is about, those that are no longer here with us. 
Hope you enjoyed joining me on this episode of Cooking with a Veteran. As always, if there's something you want to see me cook, go ahead and reach out to me. Please make sure that you like, share, and follow. I'll be posting this um, later today on my uh, YouTube page. Um, and until next time, hoorah! All right, so welcome back for a moment. I brought you back real quick because I want to show you I was talking about keeping the uh, ribs moist, and I want to show you how I'm going to do that. So I have one of my barbecue containers here. I filled it up about two ounces with some uh, applesauce. I'm going to pour in just a little bit, about half an ounce of some of my Jack Fire, okay? And then I'm going to fill it up some, about halfway, with some water. Okay, and that's going to help keep the ribs moist, um, whether you're doing it in your oven like I am, or whether you're doing it on the grill. Okay, they got the spray bottle one. I'm just going to use my cap bottle one. Going to mix that around. All right, and while I'm here, let me go ahead. It's been about 40 minutes, so I'm going to go ahead. And I'm going to take out the ribs. I'm going to check on those, see how they're doing. All right, let me give you a good view. Let's see how. Ah, oh, look at that. Look how beautiful that looks. And you can see the smoke, right? See all that smoke coming up, and they look beautiful. At this time, I'm just going to put a little bit of the liquid on there. Go ahead and look and, and cook that up um, some more. Um, I'm going to let it sit for about another maybe half an hour on this side, flip it over, um, and then let it cook the rest of the time on the other side. All right, so like I said, I just want to sprinkle a little bit of the water, keep that meat moist, go ahead and cover that up and put that back in the oven. Beautiful, right? So it's very simple. Like I said, just a little bit of apple juice, a little bit of the fire, some water, and I got me some nice uh, juice to keep the meat moist and keep that flavor going in there. You know, if I'm doing, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm doing ribs, ribs normally, I'll put a little bit of uh, pineapple and pineapple juice in there uh, and do it up that way. But for this, because I want that apple flavor, just use the apple juice and some of the fire. And it's smelling great. I wish you could smell it. It smells absolutely wonderful. All right, we'll check back in later and see how the ribs are doing. Hoorah. All right, welcome back. I know we're back a third time. I, I, I like to be able to show you um, what's going on. So welcome back to Cooking with a Veteran. Uh, first, I want to show you this. So I had some leftover uh, bacon, some apples, uh, and some onion. And so I basically just took them. I'm going to come here for a moment. I basically just took them and I sm I'm smoking up some uh, bacon, some apple bacon. Okay, so again, you know, the show I want to show you about, you know, you don't have to throw away leftovers. Um, you know, use them to your advantage. So I'm smoking up some nice, I'm smoking up some nice uh, apple bacon there. Now, let's look in the pot. Let's see how we're doing here. Okay. Oh, look at that. Look how beautiful, right? Absolutely beautiful um, this looks. And what I'm going to do, excuse me a moment. I have to, I washed all the dishes. Now I got, I got to dig in here for a moment. So I'll just give you a moment to look at that, get some tongs. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to take some tongues, and look, the, the meat is already, you know, it's so tender because it was soaking, brining for uh, 48 hours, okay, uh, let me just, ah, uh, look at that, absolutely gorgeous, um, so I want to get a little more brown on this side, let's check on our meat, see how we're doing. 
we're up. Okay, so the other side that I tested was 145. This is 131. So I'm going to leave it up this way. I'm going to stick it in the oven for another uh, 20 minutes. Okay, 20, 25 minutes. All right, got the nice soft apples there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to put in a put on a little more of my uh, applesauce there. So that doesn't dry out but you can see it's already separating from the bone there which is perfect this is going to be nice and tender still a little tough on this side nice and tender on the other side so i'm going to let this cook for about 20 minutes on this side uh in the oven and again you can see all that smoke coming up right i'm getting i wish you could smell it i'm getting that nice smoked flavor um i can smell the smoke all right so i'm going to stick the cover back on here I'm going to stick this back in my oven for 20 minutes. All right. All right. There we go. I'm going to stick this back in my oven for 20 minutes. Hey, Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. Hey, Alexa, set a timer for 20 minutes. 20 minutes, starting now. Sometimes she doesn't listen to me. All right. So, stick this back in the oven. Okay. And. I'm gonna check on that in about 20 minutes, see if it's about 145. And again, because it was so tender from brining it for 48 hours, um, it's not taking as long to cook, which is great. All right, I'll, show, I'll share a picture with you later when it's all finished and done. Again, thank you for joining me on Cooking with a Veteran. To all my brothers and sisters out there, stay safe this holiday weekend. Um, take time to remember those that are no longer with us. And until next time, hoorah.